Welcome back to the Bearded Console Gamer, and today, my friends, we are going to be getting into all of the new info that we learned about the upcoming Death Stranding Director's Cut from this week's Gamescom opening night stream. And let me tell you, there are a whole lot of quirky details packed into that 10 minute slot. So, without any further ado, let's get into all the new info we have surrounding the new story missions, game features, and all the new quirky pieces of equipment that Sam will get to play with when the ultimate edition of the game drops less than one month from today. And as always, if you enjoy the episode, or simply if you're looking for a long-term translator to decipher the maniacal workings of Hideo Kojima's mind, please be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Now, the Death Stranding Director's Cut was first revealed back in July earlier this year with a flashy pre-order trailer that revealed a swathe of new content that'll be coming to the game when it lands on PlayStation consoles on September the 24th. And if you missed any info from that initial reveal and want to catch up, be sure to check out my earlier video on the Death Stranding Director's Cut, which I'll link to at the end of the video. During the recent Gamescom opening night presentation, we got treated to a new trailer from the good folks over at Kojima Productions, which gave us a closer look at some of the new features that are becoming to the latest version of the game. Starting with the addition of an honest to god jetpack that lets Sam safely descend from ridiculous heights and jump across small chasms. You know the ones I mean. Now I'll grant you on first glance that jetpack does look a little bit OP, especially considering the fact that the vast majority of the gameplay in Death Stranding essentially involves looking at a chunk of downright treacherous terrain and thinking, how the shit am I going to get around that? And the introduction of the jetpack could essentially nullify the danger that falling poses to Sam and his precious cargo, which in turn could take a lot of fun out of the game. However, with that assumption, we are ignoring three key things. One, Hideo Kojima famously knows what he's about when it comes to video games, so you can bet there's going to be restrictions on how the jetpack can be used. Two, according to said Hideo Kojima, the jetpack is a late game item, which means that at the point you get it, you'll probably just be grateful for the helping hand. And point three, no one is forcing you to use the magical backpack, though if it were up to me, they most certainly would. Next up, we got a better look at the cargo catapult, which is capable of firing cargo safely over long distances before having it gently descend to the ground under the power of a rocket fin parachute. Now, this is obviously going to be insanely useful when making deliveries to tricky and otherwise annoying locations, but you probably won't be able to use it for every scenario. For example, I doubt you'll be able to load fragile cargo into this bad boy or anything with a specific requirement such as the famous pizza or, oh, I don't know, a nuclear bomb. And it's not just a fire and forget solution either. According to Hideo, players will be able to fine tune the descent of their cargo once the umbrella stage deploys. So blast away without fear, porters. The trailer also gave us some extra info on the Buddy Bot, which is a robot companion designed to help carry Sam's cargo across the challenging terrain of post apocalyptic America. From what we can see, the Buddy Bot is going to have two distinct modes, one of which is going to make it obediently follow Sam, and another which will see it travel autonomously to a predetermined location. So if you're feeling particularly lazy and have a relatively light haul, there's nothing to stop you from hopping on the back of the Buddy Bot, setting a destination, and allowing the Robo Steed to do all of the hard work while you soak in the gloriously realized landscape. However, it does seem like it's only going to be able to function in regions that have already been connected to the chiral network via Sam's trusty Cupid. Next up, we got treated to another look of the Bridges Firing Range, which lets you take on various enemies that populate the world of Death Stranding in a simulated setting as you get to grips with the many weapons that become available to Sam as you progress through the game. That includes the Mesa Gun, a new weapon that's being introduced with the director's cut and which is capable of stunning enemies with high voltage bursts of helpful electricity. Players will also now have the ability to replay boss battles via the Nightmares and Memories menu, which can be accessed by going to Sam's private room and interacting with the models displayed behind the bed. Scores attained in boss battles and on the firing range are then shared in the online ranking system, which allows you to compare your performance with that of flesh and blood players spread around the world. In further news, a selection of eight carefully curated tracks have been added to the music player in Sam's room, and these new tunes will also play as and when the game deems fit as Sam travels throughout the barren world of Death Stranding in a kind of Red Dead Redemption cinematic way. And it seems that you might even be able to play certain songs manually while out exploring the continent, which wasn't possible in the standard version of the game. However, according to this tweet from Hideo, you'll only be able to play songs that, and I quote, match the delivery mission. So I'm guessing that for standard missions, you'll be able to play pretty much anything, but in particularly somber sections of the game, whole swathes of the audio catalogue could be barred from use. 
But moving on, the July pre-order trailer revealed the existence of the jump ramp, which players will be able to build using their PCC to help them get some air on their trusty metal steeds. And in the new trailer, we learned that while jumping on these ramps, Sam is going to be able to pull off some tasty tricks because damn it, Sam needs to have some fun while dealing with his abandonment issues, the slow dissolution of human society, and an impending mass extinction event, okay? Finally, we got an extended look at the new story missions coming to the director's cut. This time around, we see Sam exploring what appears to be a derelict Bridges facility littered with medical equipment that seems to be related to the BB experiments. With BB, of course, being the bridge baby that's attached to Sam's chest throughout the entirety of the adventure. In the earlier pre-order trailer, we saw shots of the same facility with prototype bridge baby capsules scattered in the dirt. And in this new trailer, we see the white life support pods of the Still Mothers, the name given to the unfortunate individuals who birthed the BBs, dotted throughout the facility in various states of disrepair. In multiple scenes, we can see Sam being led through the facility by the holographic projection of what appears to be the grey-haired woman from this photograph. Now, we still have no idea yet who this is or what the deal is with the girl sitting on her lap, but it seems like she has some kind of relationship with this guy who's wearing a Fragile Express jacket and who could, therefore, be Fragile's father. And in this final scene of the trailer, we see Sam exploring an unusual room populated by an upside down crab and a creeping sperm whale. And it's important to me that you know that I know that it's a sperm whale and not some other type of loser whale because I need you to know that I know my nonsense when it comes to marine animals. Now go put some respect on my name. But nonsense aside, I have three theories as to what this final scene meant. One, it could be that Hideo Kojima is simply Hideo kojima with us and trying to tie our fragile minds into knots for no particular reason other than the fact that it seems to be his own personal form of blood sport. Number two, this could be a simulation room in the basement of a Bridges facility that's similar in nature to the one that hosts the firing range. So just think holodeck on a grand scale. And finally three, it could be a scientific facility and that this room is somehow connected to either the beach or the realm called the seam which connects all beaches to the land of the living and through which Sam is able to repatriate. Though I'll grant you, given Sam's casual attire and the generally chill attitude, that last one doesn't seem very likely. Or it could be a giant metaphor about how Kojima's next project is looming closer and that, like Sam, you're simply not realizing it. Oh my god, the blue box thing is real, isn't it? It's Kojima. Regardless, add all of the nonsense listed above to the graphical and gameplay upgrades detailed in the announcement trailer, which I covered in a previous video and which I'll link to at the end, and the director's cut is looking like a substantial improvement over the vanilla game. And that's especially the case considering that you're going to be able to upgrade to the Ultimate Edition at the low, low cost of $10 if you already own a digital or physical edition of Death Stranding. And on that note, I'm going to leave it there for today. Let me know in the comments what you think about the new additions to the Death Stranding Director's Cut. And as always, if you enjoyed the show, be sure to like and subscribe and to keep it here for all the biggest news from around the video gaming industry.